Beneath the North Island of New Zealand, there is a restless sleeper. Usually the sleeper is just breathing deeply, but sometimes they twitch with a bad dream, or rearrange an arm or leg. Occasionally they roll and dive deeply into a new position. Our sleeper, the Pacific Plate, is covered by a rumpled patchwork blanket, the Australian Plate. This blanket is pushed up in some places and pulled down in others. In places it is folded over itself and the edges are being worn away or repaired with new material. This blanket is the Australian Plate. This blanket is the beautiful land on which all North Islanders and some South Islanders live. We are at the mercy of the sleeper and their slumbering movements. We now know how to monitor and even anticipate the deep breathing. We can also measure twitching, and although very unpleasant and challenging, we can manage okay with the movement of a limb. However, full body movements will be bigger than anything we've witnessed in the last 200 years. These large scale movements, also known as subduction earthquakes, are those that occur between the sleeper and the blanket, between the Pacific Plate and the Australian Plate. This boundary is the Hikarangi subduction zone, New Zealand's largest fault. Subduction earthquakes are the largest earthquakes that happen worldwide and they cause the largest tsunami. Most of the damaging earthquakes we've experienced in New Zealand have been on faults within the Australian plate where there has been little or no movement between the two plates. However, we know our sleeper moves. The 1947 Poverty Bay earthquakes caused an 11 metre high tsunami and were the result of a slight shift between the two plates. The 2016 Kaikoura earthquake was the result of numerous faults breaking in the Australian plate, but the sleeper contributed to the chaos by moving a little at the same time. So what happens when the sleeper moves their whole body, and how often does this occur? Kate Clark, a genius science earthquake geologist with a group of colleagues, recently analysed all known past large earthquakes and tsunami along the Hikarangi subduction zone. The purpose of this research was to systematically assess the evidence for these subduction zone earthquakes. Previous research has focused on individual patches of the blanket, while this research looks at the overall pattern. As witnessed in the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake, large quakes can raise land out of the sea. They can also drop land below sea level. The east coast of the North Island and Northern South Island has many sites with steep terraces and drowned coastal plains. Scientists identify past seduction earthquakes by looking for evidence of vertical coastal movements and tsunami inundation that has occurred at the same time at many sites along the seduction zone. Over several decades, many of these sites have been surveyed and dated by different geologists to find out how big the earthquakes were and when they occurred. Kate's work, recently published in Marine Geology, starts to make a cohesive pattern out of a complicated patchwork of information. Looking at the big picture, the whole length of the blanket rather than individual squares of the patchwork, we can see when our sleeper moves significantly over the last few thousand years. The Hikarangi subduction zone ruptured in large earthquakes at least 10 times over the last 7,500 years. The most recent subduction earthquake was 500 years ago, and the biggest was a whole body movement with evidence preserved from Melbourne to the north of Gisborne. There is no obvious pattern between different parts, although the southern and central parts seem to move more than the northern parts. More pieces of the patchwork are currently being investigated as part of several large research programs to better understand the Hikarangi subduction zone and the hazard it poses. Researchers hope to learn more about past subduction earthquakes by investigating records of intense shaking under the sea off the North Island's east coast. So just like any sleeping body, the deep breathing is regular and frequent through the night. The twitching and limb movements are less regular and less frequent, and the whole body shifts only occasionally. For now, we can be thankful our sleeper is peaceful, but we know they will move again and disrupt the blanket we call home. We have some unknown time before the next upheaval, so let's use that time to make ourselves more prepared for such movements. Large earthquakes and tsunami have happened here in the past. Remember, if you feel a long or strong earthquake, get gone and immediately evacuate to high ground or inland.